Wow, this guy's going to make you think. I am so excited. He is in our virtual green room, David Shipley, and he's written a book called Backup Hard Drive. And um, it's funny because I'm just going to say this one thing. I, when I was a TV anchor, I liked thinking about dinosaurs and fossils so much and what happened to the dinosaurs that I worked in the Albuquerque Natural History Museum. So there's such a big chunk of his thought process and what's in this book that made me made me go, aha, yeah. And I think you're going to say the same thing. So David, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure, absolutely. The road to writing this book how did this get kicked around in, in your head? What sent you in this direction of, you know, I've got this book and I've got this idea and there's things I'm thinking about. Well, I, I started thinking about people and what they do and how they can work. And then I thought, well, what ha would have happened if a meteor, the meteor that had made the dinosaurs extinct missed the earth? We would all be little creatures running around these giant reptiles feet trying to not get eaten. And then I asked myself, what makes us so smart? And I boiled down to, uh, we are the first creatures that ever pass information down to the next generation. None of the other creatures do that. And we use that, that information and we build on it. And finally, I thought, here we are, we have more data right now than we've ever had in our lives. We can store tons of information and all of it is readily available through the internet and through all different means. What are we gonna do with that? Where's it gonna go? Where's, where's the pass down? There isn't one right now. Uh, something I might add is that the hard drive backup, what is the hard drive backup? Well, we're the hard drive the earth right now is a hard drive. Where's the backup? Where's it? Where is it? Where's it going? It is so scary to think about that. You're right. Where, where is it going? And what happens if we don't think about that? And that's your, your book has so many of those nuggets that make you think there's no, there's no question about it. So, you know, we've got the people listening to us across the country and in other places in, in the world. And, and if they said, David, that sounds fascinating. Tell us more about the book. So tell us a little more about the book. Well, there's, uh, as you said, there's a lot of little stuff in the book that I think people would be interested in. And some of it has to do with uh, what people can do when they're taken out of their comfort zone and how they can prove themselves. But it's also how people interact with each other and what they can eventually accomplish. And as part of the interacting that you're saying, that's so key. And you talk about that in the book because again, what is the backup? What is the backup yeah. and, and what is the hard drive? And it's very apparent. And the thought process is, you know, you said this to me even off the air about what happens when the rock disappears. Yeah, that, that is the thing. We, we live on a, on a wet rock and and one day it's going to disappear but it's going to the people on it actually all the living things are going to disappear a long time before the rock does based on on what the the scientists think yeah. so what is going to happen with us i mean where are we going to go is, is this the end of it we're done that's it show's over i hope not i hope we have a a plan i know the technology is trying to work on us like going to other planets and things like that but right now we're not even close. I mean, we'll take, I don't know, 50, 60 years to get to the next star. And that's if we do something we can't do yet, like go like the 10th of speed of light. We can't do that yet. So what is going to happen? How are we going to solve that problem? Yeah, we could talk about that all day long. I mean, what, yeah. what is it? How do we connect that? And for you in thinking and letting your mind and your imagination roam and coming up with the 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 storyline and how you put all this together how did this book come about i mean i know you you mentioned to me it took you a year to write it were you just getting these thought bubbles well i started writing the book and i would keep getting these stop points where i just that was it i couldn't think of of what to say i uh it kind of was like when i went to uh 
a YMCA camp when I was younger. The counselors used to have this thing they used to do every night where one counselor would tell a story and they would lead that story right at the edge of a cliff. You know, the, the, the heroine or hero is going to die. And then that's where it ends. So the next night, then another counselor had to come in, resolve the situation, build their own little situation for the, for the counselor and the following. So I kind of felt like that's what was happening to me. I was, one of the things I do right now is teach swimming. And I would be standing in the pool teaching some poor student how to, how to swim and come up with this, oh, idea, oh, oh, I couldn't wait to get out of the pool to get home to write it down before I forgot it. So anyway, that's, I love that's that. where how the book came about, just spurt here, spurt there, yeah. And those are the best books because uh, even some of our most brilliant writers in history, they'll say the same thing about the process uh -huh. and about what, where they were and what they thought about. So that's wonderful that you, and I call them thought bubbles. Like, oh, I can't wait. You said it, the yeah. magic words. I can't wait to write this down. Was it really cool for you to see this book come out? I mean, to, to have the book there and it's on Amazon and that's where you can pick up, back up a hard drive, of course. Yeah, well, it, it was. Um... I wish more people would be reading it, but the uh, it was it was pretty neat for it to come out, and I really do hope that uh, people understand that this is a thought provoking book, and and there's different places in the book at different spots that if you just read it as a novel, you won't get enough out of the book. But there's these spots that say, well, what about that? I mean, where are we going with this? And hopefully when they read the book, they'll come up with those. Yeah, I like how you said that. It is a thought provoking book. It is, absolutely. Yeah. But I might, might also add, I, I hopefully I did this, but I tried to emphasize it a lot to do with people. You know, how people interact and how they work together and how they, they perform better as a group than they do as an individual and how people who get step out of their comfort zone all of a sudden find out they're a whole new person so hopefully they'll that's in the book too I, and i hope that people appreciate that well that's a great place to end this david shipley back up hard drive pick up the book it is we'll say it again thought provoking there's no question about it and it's entertaining i think it's entertaining as well besides making you think and you'll real run around with those thought bubbles when you're at the supermarket after you've read his book or you're walking the dog because <laughs> i know it happened to me so david uh, thank you so much okay i appreciate it thank you for, for having me so i love the questions that he asked that david asks you know where are we going and how are we going to get there? And scientifically, especially when you look at it, are we doomed? I mean, it, how long is this going to take in that collection of knowledge? And it's always been interesting to me since I was a kid and figuring out, looking at where we are on earth and, and, and our spot in the world and, if you will, the outer world. So David really put that into perspective for me. I think those questions that I've thought about, uh, you know, exploring the existence of life elsewhere in the universe and how he was motivated to do this, I think is fascinating. And a little bit quick snippet on his back round. He was actually a lifeguard in Southern California with hundreds of rescues. We could talk to him about that one night. Um, and, and after college, he flew in the U.S. Air Force, and then he was an engineer at Lockheed Martin. So he understands technology because he's had to use technology and has been wrapped up into it for, for years. And I, I like the idea, as I mentioned it, I call it that thought bubble, that this was weighing on his mind. Like he was thinking about well, what happens and where does all of that go? And that's why the title to me tells you exactly what it is, exactly what you're exploring there, hard drive backup. So well, well, well done. Um, millions, billions, or you know, several billion years, think of that collection of knowledge and all the things, the great things that so many people have been doing since some... Um, since they showed up on earth and what happened if poof in a minute it was uh it was all gone and how easily could that happen very very thought provoking so thanks to all of you for listening to this version of the show and this interview 
make it count, everybody.